let's take a look at some of the new mix console functionality in Cubase Pro 8. Cubase has always had extensive linking capabilities, and you know, version 7 introduced two concepts of linking, either a quick link or a more permanent defined link. So if I wanted to select all of my channels here in my project, I could hold down my shift key and I could enable quick link. And as soon as I do that, we can move one fader and all the faders will be linked, turn off quick link, and then they're all function completely independently. If I click on the link icon here, we can now actually choose what parameters that we want linked in a particular link group. So if I didn't want panning, but just volume, routing, and maybe my sends, you could pick and choose what aspects. We can now label these links. So if I wanted to call this a drum link channel, I could just do that right there. Now new is we see the option of adding a VCA fader. So the link groups are very handy, but if you already have existing automation, you may want to work with a VCA fader. So I could take an existing linked group and adjust that as my VCA and add that to a VCA fader as we saw, or I could just right click and say, let's add VCA fader to selected channels. So if I have existing automation in my project where channels are going up and down independently, I can now write the automation on my VCA fader. And even though my VCA fader is going down, we'll still see the channel faders going up in kind of contrary motion. So they still kind of keep their proportionality and keep their existing automation So as we write this automation, now this doesn't sum the audio signal, it's just controlling the volume level. So it doesn't affect the gain structure of audio that's going to groups and other processing. So now I have existing automation here and existing automation from my VCA fader. How does that work in our automation editing? So if I wanted to open my automation panel, I'll click here, let's look at volume automation. And let's just kind of blow up our volume automation here. So we could actually see once we kind of hover the mouse over two different values. So we see kind of the real automation as well as the VCA automation. So if I wanted to kind of consolidate or coalesce those, I can right, I can click right here on the VCA fader. Just go to the right. You'll see a little pop-up window will appear. I will say combine automation of VCA and link channels. So now as soon as I come right there, it's now been consolidated, so we have one automation value. So, and something else that's interesting is we could do some clever routing here. Let's say if I wanted to edit this link group, uh, we'll just say, okay, we're going to take off the VCA and we'll just remove, uh, we'll keep the combined automation. And if I wanted to have nested link groups, I could say, okay, let's take just my kicks here and we'll choose to blow out the link so as if we're starting from scratch. So I could now select my kick drums, add these to the VCA fader, go to my snares, again, right click, add VCA fader to the selected channels. Let's say my hats and my toms. And let's do my rooms and overheads to, again, to their own dedicated VCA fader. And now if I just want to select just the VCA faders themselves, I can add those to their own nested kind of power VCA fader. So as I wanted to write automation again, I can have this link controlling each of the VCA faders, which is in essence controlling each of their subgroup. So you can see that if you have existing automation and you just want to just do a little tweak uh, to bring something up or down, the VCA faders are kind of really ideal for that. So it allows you a tremendous amount of flexibility. Now we saw our automation lanes here. Uh, and if I wanted to Let's open up my automation panel and let's go ahead and just hide all of our automation. And let's say if I have uh, an audio track here, we have a new automation writing mode 
where we could actually call virgin territory. So as I just kind of click directly here, as I draw in automation without this enabled, we'd always see kind of a beginning and end value, kind of a static value. But now with, when I come here, we enable our automation view. I could just kind of draw in automation that doesn't have a preset known uh, beginning or end point before that automation value actually hits. So we can have virgin automation territory. Uh, so something we've had in Nuendo for a little bit. Now one other feature of Nuendo that's migrated its way down into Cubase is this concept of direct routing. So if we're setting up a lot of parallel processing, you may run into situations where you want to send it to multiple destinations. So if I enable, have my quick link enabled, I could take all of my drums and let's say I want them to all go to a stereo output. Now we could enable direct routing here. So at this point I could say, I want it to go to my stereo output. I want it to go to directly to a drum bus here and also to a parallel drum bus. And then once you click up here in the upper right hand corner, we could do your direct routing summing. So what you can do at this point is as you play back your tracks, you can have the drums going directly to the stereo output. You can route it to a group if you wanted to, and also to a parallel group. So if you want to do some extensive parallel compression on there, it's very easy to set. You can actually route to eight distinct destinations. So very, very powerful routing capability. One of the things that was introduced in Cubase 7 was a concept of the channel strip. So instead of looking at traditional plugin interfaces, which can kind of fill up your entire screen, we said, wouldn't it be better if we could come here and say, okay, I want to uh, have my quick link turned on. I want to have a noise gate on every single channel. I wanted to have a vintage compressor and we could choose between three different compressors. And we could just kind of scroll up and down and see all this functionality and we could change the order. So new in version eight, we can actually now have the EQ enabled here. So we could see the EQ knobs as we do this, but we have some new functionality as well. So version 7.5 in the saturation section added Magneto and we had the envelope shaper for transient design, but we also have now added the DSer. So at this point, we could see kind of a whole virtual console laid out for us. And if we wanted to kind of resize that, uh, we could do that very easily. And this way you could just kind of scroll up and down without having the need for a lot of plugin interfaces where you can't see that much processing going on. In the EQ section, there's been some enhancements here. So if I have my EQ linked here, I could actually just choose to say, I could see my frequency that I'm actually adjusting. So if you know that your song is in the key of G or E, you could actually just kind of emphasize those particular frequencies. So we can see the pitch here change as we adjust our notes. So it makes it very easy to dial in the EQ perfectly. Now, as we kind of work with our number of different uh, tracks, we see very extensive metering options inside of Cubase. So if I wanted to come here, we could look at not only loudness metering in our control room. So if I wanted to turn this on, we could see our loudness metering, but we could also just kind of switch over here directly to various meter types. So if I wanted to Again, say, okay, I want this to be British scale, digital scale, CAT system 20, 14, 12. But metering generally only shows you what is happening at that particular moment in time and not what's going to happen. So what's really great is you can now switch the meter type here from PPM to wave meters. So this way you can see like three seconds before and three seconds after of exactly what tracks are going on. So as you can see with the capability of VCA linking, uh, virgin automation territory, direct routing, uh, EQ enhancements, and wave meters, it makes it for a very powerful mixing platform.